For a previous project, I got myself the 7 inch 800 by 480 LCD screen kits. Only problem was and still is that no matter which video resolution I try out, a part of the screen is not visible on the LCD. But with the help of Raspberry Pi B Plus and the OSMC Media Center, which I downloaded and installed onto a microSD card, I was capable of choosing a resolution of 680 by 460 and utilizing the video scale feature in order to display the complete screen onto my LCD. And now that this problem was solved, I thought about what I could do with such an LCD screen. The conclusion was an LED projector. So in this video, I will present you the build process of this rather crude prototype, which might allow me to enjoy my favorite videos on the big screen. Let's find it out. First off, I grab the slotted screwdriver, flip the LCD around and bend the front metal case open so that I can remove it. The back metal case though only required a bit of force to take it off. Afterwards, I remove the light diffuser films and finally desolder the LED backlight from the flexible flat cable. I then once again hooked the bare LCD up to my converter circuits, gave it power and saw absolutely nothing. The reason is pretty obvious. We need a light source to shine through the LCD to see the image or to even project it onto a wall. But for the latter one, the light source has to be much brighter. That is why I got this 30 watts high power LED with a fitting lens, 12 volt driver circuits and a big heatsink. After soldering the output wires to the LED and connecting the input to my lab bench power supply, I realized that this constellation does work, but my power supply reached its current limits. Luckily, I had this powerful 12 volt 23.5 amp power supply lying around that could handle this job without a problem. And don't worry, I will show you where I salvaged it from during next week's episode. The circuit then drew around 4 amps to light up the LED properly. But as a side effect, the temperature of it also increased slowly. To keep the LED cool and therefore expand its lifespan, I firstly cleaned the contact area of the heatsink and LED with acetone and then used thermal glue to bond them together. While that is drying, let's have a look at a real life projector example. After cracking it open, we can see the first glass layer the light passes through, which apparently filters out a couple of wavelengths. Next is a simple piece of glass, followed by a plastic lens, which can turn my footage into a trippy experience. Then we got a polarization filter in front of the LCD and another one behind it. And also right behind the non-existing LCD is a very important lens, the so-called Fresnel lens, which our crew projector also needs to diffuse the light of the LED evenly. And at the end of the real life projector is obviously the magnifying lens. Now back to my projector. To keep the design simple and accessible, I used an ordinary shoebox with these measurements and started modifying it by cutting out a square in the middle of one of the smaller sides so that the LED with heatsink can fit in there snugly. Next, I prepared a mixture of two component adhesive and used it to bound the base and lens to the LED. While that was drying, I drew a rectangle with these measurements onto a piece of cardboard and used a box cutter afterwards to create the shape which should fit well inside the shoebox. Next, I measured the frame thickness of the LCD and created another square in the middle of the cardboard according to those sizes. I then used duct tape to secure the screen frame to the cardboard which still fits nicely inside the shoebox. Now that the glue of the lens was dry, I soldered 1.5 square millimeter wire to each terminal and used a bit of hot glue to prevent the wires from touching the heatsink. Then I pushed the LED in its place, marked the necessary mounting holes for the heatsink onto the shoebox, drilled the hole with a 4mm drill and used M4 bolts and nuts to mount this lighting setup permanently. I also drilled an 8mm hole in order to get the LED wires out of the box right before I did the test run and moved on to the Fresnel lens. The one I salvaged earlier is a bit too small, so I had to get a bigger one, in this case a Fresnel lens which is normally used with cars to get a better angle of view. But in order to stay close to the original projector lens, I measured the proportions from the middle to the top and bottom part and scaled those onto the new lens. 
mark the necessary separating lines and cut out the square. Afterwards, I repeated the same cardboard cutting procedure I did earlier for the LCD to mount the Fresnel lens onto cardboard as well. That brings us to the last component, a magnifying lens, in this case with a magnification factor of 5 and a diameter of 60mm. I simply remove the handle of it and use a compass to draw a 62mm circle in the middle of the other small side of the shoebox. Then I used my trusty box cutter once again to create the hole, press the lens in its place and covered every unnecessary opening with duct tape. To later adjust the screen position easily and therefore focus the image, I also marked the center line of the lid and created a long rectangle cutout with a width of 2.5 cm according to the width of the flexible flat cable. But after first test run with the LCD, I was not happy about how much light passes through the screen. So I peeled off the polarization filter of the screen while making sure to not use too much force and replaced it in front of the lens with the polarization filter I found earlier. And just like that, this project was complete. But did it actually work? Well, kind of. After preparing the setup in front of a white wall and getting the LCD and Fresnel lens in a decent position, I got a big and focused picture. Trust me, my camera doesn't do it justice here. But the main problem was my Fresnel lens, which did not diffuse the light well enough. That is why there's only a circle of the video. After trying out the Fresnel lens from the real projector, I got to see more of the picture, which would lead to a complete image if we increase the size of the lens. And maybe I will do that in a future project. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.